that was a that was a long recap. There was a lot of stuff going on at Combo Breaker. So let's get into let's get into what my weekend of Combo Breaker was like. Um, I talked a little bit about this in our morning shows, but I gotta tell you, I, I did not want to go. I, I will be a hundred percent honest. The week before, I was like just feeling anxiety. I almost canceled the trip. I you know. I just, I, you know, I just wasn't feeling it. You know what I mean? You know when you're just not feeling it? I, it's hard to explain. I hope you guys know what I'm saying, though. Um, I don't know if it was, like, anxiety. I don't know if it was, like, just panic with everything else. But I, you know, I ended up just sucking it up and going. And boy, am I glad I went. I had an absolute blast. Um, we had the show with Tommy Two-Step. Uh, Rick was nice enough to uh, hook us up and letting us use uh, the space. Unfortunately, uh Rick tried to get us to use somebody's stream setup. We weren't able to do it. Um, even the guy was, like, not able to run his own setup. It was a little bit weird. Uh, so we just did it from my phone. <laughs> and honestly, I'll be honest, man. That's one of my favorite shows we've ever done. Me and Tommy just on the phone. I think that show was way better than if we had done it normally, right? Uh, I had a good time. Then, of course, uh, Friday was my big tournament day. I had... Four pools, two of which I didn't go to. I didn't go to my Street Fighter Five pool because I had a very difficult decision to make. It was either I go play Street Fighter Five in the final Street Fighter Five tournament before Street Fighter Six, or I go play Tekken Eight. Right, and I'll just show you guys this. I went and played Tekken Eight. It's upside down. Still upside down. Still upside down. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so they gave me this cool lanyard for playing Tekken 8. And man, I got to tell you guys, we're going to get into it later, but Tekken 8, amazing. Brian was not playable. It was the same build from Tokyo Game Show. It was the same build from Tokyo Game Show. So it was only um, Paul, Jin, Kazuya, Jun, uh, Ling, Marshall, Jack and I'm missing one person. I'm missing one person. King, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hot Limit. King, yes. Yeah, so it was only those eight. It was the same build as the Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo. Oh, wait, did I say Tokyo Game Show? I meant Evo Japan. You're right, Squidly. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, uh, Evo Japan. You're right. You're right. My apologies. My apologies. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about Tekken 8 in a little bit. I then went and played my Tekken 7 pool. And, you know, like... I went 0-2 in Tekken again. Tekken's a game that I never seem to not go 0-2 in. Um, I love playing Tekken, but every time I play in tournament, like, I, everybody's just so much better than I am. <laughs> and ultimately, like, here's the thing. I haven't been playing. I have not been playing. So I don't know why I expected anything different. I'm just an idiot, right? Uh, so went 0-2 in Tekken. Had a lot of fun, by the way. Like, all the crew... Arslan Ash was in my pool, so my expectations were already low, and I somehow managed to even get lower... Than those expectations it was crazy uh but everybody was super nice uh learned a lot talked to everybody uh it was super cool got to hang out a little bit it was super fun uh immediately after that i had to run to my strive pool where i went uh i went two and two i was man i was one game away from making it out of pools because in combo breaker they have the three out uh you know, the three out rule, right? Where if you get to winner's finals of your pool, whether you win or lose, you make it out of pools. I was in winner's semis and I ran into a Jacko player who made it out of pools, right? Uh, so that was, that was hard. Uh, and then I got sent to losers where I played Fireworks, the guy who got ninth at Mystery Game. And he just completely destroyed me with uh, Nago. And then he himself got destroyed by another Jacko player. There were three Jacko players in my pool who were all really good. It, it's making me think that Jacko is a problem. You know what I mean? Uh, it was Ed Venture, who I was told was like one of the best Jackos in uh, North America. Uh, then it was Shy Town. That was the guy that beat me to then play Ed Venture in uh, Winner's Finals. And then uh, I don't know the name of the other guy, but he also made it out of pool. So all three people who made it out of my pool were Jacko players. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, but again, it's like I haven't been playing, so it's my own fault, right? And for whatever reason, I have higher expectations than that. So 
I was starting to feel a little bit down, and I felt down enough that like I had my KOF pools, and that's a game that I don't even know how to play, so I decided to just skip it. So I didn't even go to my KOF pool. So I just walked around, watched a couple games, watched Primal Rage. Uh, I got to talk to Ketchup and Mustard after they both got first and second at Primal Rage, and man, they are so nice. They're so nice. Like we got to chat a little bit. We talked a little about how uh, about how we played Rumbleverse together. Uh, and we got to like chit chat just for a hot second, and then. Uh, and then we went our separate ways. Day two, I had my mystery game pool. And I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with it or not, but check this shit out. I fucking won my pool in winners. Suck it, everybody. I'm going to Chipotle. Yeah. Let's go. I'm part of the cool club. I was hoping to get more than one, but I got one. Uh... And it was mystery game tournament. <laughs> so mystery game tournament is always hilarious because it's just a clusterfuck in the best way. This year, things were a little bit different, right? Because MSI uh, sponsored or MSI sponsored the tournament. So instead of having the cap at 256, they were able to extend the cap to 200 or 512, which was not reached, by the way. Uh, and all of the games were emulated on MSI laptops. It made things a little bit quicker, right? Because usually with Mystery Game, what they do is they actually like unplug systems and then plug other systems in, right? So it takes a little while to switch between rounds. So this felt a lot more, uh, a lot more streamlined. It was very interesting. Um, I for whatever reason, my pool, uh, I got two buys, uh, like two, like two of my first matches didn't show up, and then we played Toshinden Battle Arena where I played the Whip Lady, and uh. I just kept hitting sweep, and my opponent didn't know how to deal with it. It was great. And then for winner's finals of my pool, we played some weird wrestling game where I picked a guy with a turban. I found he did this weird flip kick, and then, like, whenever I got a knockdown, I figured out how to mount my opponent, but, like, then we would just run, a, like, roll around. It was weird. It was weird. And then if you guys did not watch the stream, I choked really hard in uh, lightning... What's it called? Like the Daigo something? It was like Lightning something. I forget what it's called. Lightning Legend? Something like that. Um, and that's the game I played. Uh, Brad Skills. Uh, and I was match point. 1-0. Match point, And then I choked and lost. <laughs> and then after that, I immediately went and played another game, which was an awful, awful game. I don't even know what it was called, but it, like you were, we were robots. And I saw somebody pick a giant dragon robot and beat ass. So myself and my opponent picked the giant dragon robot. And again, 1-0, match point, and then I choked it. Two times in a row. I'm so pissed. I'm so pissed. Uh, so I o 2 would out of top 64. Still got... I just threw it. Uh, still got the, uh, the Chipotle card, uh, but didn't do too well for the rest of the tournament, unfortunately. With that said, though, I had a blast. Even though I was a little bit sad, um, I had a blast. And everybody I played was super nice. Like, we were all just laughing and having, like, just laughing at all the games uh, and all the crazy shit that, like, you know, existed in the 80s and 90s <laughs> and 2000s, too. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And if it wasn't for the fact that everybody... It, that's one of those things that, like, reminds me why I enjoy going to tournament. Is that card considered a reward or a punishment? I don't know, man. It's shiny. Like, that's my favorite part about it. But that's one thing that kind of I always forget about traveling to tournaments is that, like, when you're there and everybody loves fighting games and you're just, like, there, sh uh, like, enjoying each other's company and enjoying the games you're playing, like, that's a special feeling that's difficult to get anywhere else. Um, so shout-outs to everybody I met this weekend. Shout-outs to everybody I played. Shout-outs to everybody that beat me up. And, uh, and shout-outs to Rick Dejado and Eidolon and everybody else who is in the Combo Breaker team because it was, it, was, it, was, you know, it was nothing short of an amazing time. Um, for the first time in my FGC career, I even, I even uh, hung out at the bar afterwards. Uh, I got to meet Marine. You know, Marine was on the show. I got to meet Marine. Uh, beautiful, beautiful human being. She's so funny, so energetic. Same thing with Yohozi. I got to meet Yohozi. Um, we chatted for a little bit because she was leaving from Mystery Game uh, Top 64 while I was going in for my wave. So we got to say hello. Uh, 
met up with St. Cola. And I th I've said this story, man, like St. Cola, I was walking around after losing out of mystery game and I was feeling like I was a little bit in my feelings and St. Cola like gave me a little, little bit of a pep talk or as Dr. African calls it, the Pepsi talk. Uh, <laughs> and uh, man, it, like, you know, it, it's, it's easy to just tell someone else to go away instead of like, you know, talking to them and like picking them up off the ground when they're feeling low. So shout outs to St. Cola. Uh, I tried to stream from the venue. I, the Twitch streaming app sucks. I need to find an alternative. Um, hopefully I can find something that doesn't drop and not tell me so that we can do a proper stream from a tournament venue. Uh, I walked around. I interviewed the guys over at Victrix only to see after the interview that the stream went down. <laughs> it was very funny. Uh, I also got to meet some of the MSI guys. The MSI guys were super nice, so shout outs to them. Uh, still have not had Popcorn Baron. The Popcorn Baron line was crazy all weekend. The, the arcade at this year's Combo Breaker was something out of, like, a dream. It was crazy. It, they even had a crazy taxi machine. Tommy Two-Step and I were, like, fighting over who was going to play that first. It was, it was awesome. I almost got a high score. Uh, but it was super duper fun, man. Uh, that arcade was amazing. Uh, the ghost pepper popcorn is good. I've never had popcorn, Baron. Uh, I'm trying to think what else happened. Uh, oh, how could I forget? Uh, this was, I think, something that... This was something that happened that I was not expecting to happen in a million years, but kind of made this weekend all the more special because of it. This is myself and some of the devs from Rumbleverse and Larry at God on the right. Uh, Heeman, who was the community, who is the community manager at Iron Galaxy, was the community manager for Rumbleverse, uh, brought a bunch of the guys to come watch fighting games, and then we ran into each other. So we decided to take this Rumbleverse community picture here. Uh, there were like four other people who had left by this point, so unfortunately we didn't get everybody, like Wheels. Uh, Triumph was there. So there was a lot of other people that should have been in this picture, but unfortunately we didn't get there quite in time. Uh, and of course, me striking a Rumbleverse pose. Uh, Lariat God, who used to go by Nerf Meditate in the game, meditating. Uh, the person to the left or to the right of Lariat God is Mike, uh, recruiter. The person with the baby is Keeman, uh, the community manager. He's the person who did all those, broad, uh, all those uh, update streams with Keats. Uh, to his left is uh, Andrew or Arthur. Man, I suck with names. Anyway, all of those guys were super nice to hang with and super cool. Um, and meeting them made it all made this week all the much more special, right? Because like I did not expect that to happen in a million years. So we all got to like reminisce a little bit about how much fun we had with Rumbleverse. We got to meet each other, like you know, and just hang out, man. It, it was chill. It was cool. It was dope. So big ups to the Iron Galaxy guys. And then Sunday. Sunday happened. It was just finals, man. <laughs> it just everybody screaming all the time. <laughs> uh it was it was really cool, man. Uh I haven't gotten to enjoy being in a crowd, I think, since Evo last year. Um, even Combo Breaker last year, I didn't stay in the crowd right. I'm still getting used to being in crowds after you know, the pandemic and everything, like, I still, like, it still feels weird being in crowds, so, but I was able to stay for, um, I was able to stay for KOF, I watched KOF, the, the cool thing about Combo Breaker is since they have that giant setup with five streams in one wall, I got to watch KOF, uh, Virtual Fighter, and, um, Uni uh, Uniclear all at the same time, right, so I got to see the legendary Jack Ingoff versus Mike Oxlong match, um, uh, I then moved over and got to see the start of Tekken and the end of uh, Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Or, I'm sorry, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. I met Jadlin. Uh, I met Jadlin, and she was like, I was literally just walking by, and she walked by in front of me. So I pulled her aside, and we had a nice little chat. She is down to be on the show, so we'll probably have Jadlin on the show in the near future. That's going to be really cool. Uh, she seems like a super, super nice person. Uh, I, <laughs> when, I, when I saw her, I was like, hey, are you Jadlin? She goes, that's me! Uh, she's very funny. She's very funny. Uh, but yeah, uh, 
we and then you know i tried to find a spot to sit down and watch tekken and i found a damn nice spot i found a damn nice spot to watch some tekken got to see oh i forgot to say this immediately immediately after i played tekken 8 i was walking back into the venue and i saw harada and i pulled harada over i was like harada san and then in English, because I don't know how to speak Japanese, I was like, I was wearing the, I was wearing the, uh, the lanyard, so I did one of these. I was like, I just played Tekken Eight, and I think he understood that because he goes, he went, oh. And then I said, it was really fun, man, great job. And then he goes, oh. And then he walked away. So I don't, th I don't think he understood what I was saying. Uh, and then on Sunday when I was doing that stream that kept dropping out, <laughs> uh. Immediately when I got off the elevator, I saw the Bandai Namco, the Nam Cops were all chilling by the elevator, right? So it was Michael Murray, Harada, and like three other people who were definitely from uh, Nam Cops. Uh, and I leaned over to Michael Murray and I was like, hey, I just, I played the Tekken beta this week. I had a blast. Thank you so much. And Michael Murray was like, oh, dude, thanks. And uh, I think Michael Murray's reaction gave Harada the information, right? Because Harada then turned around to me and was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was really cool. I wish I spoke Japanese so I could like tell Harada like what I'm actually saying, but I think it's funnier that he doesn't know. <laughs> He's so funny, man. I love that whole crew, dude. They're so cool. Um, but yeah, I just said hi and then kept going on my way. So I didn't ask him for shit. I just said I enjoyed Tekken 8, and I had a lot of fun. Uh, and then, of course, as we were uh, about to watch Tekken 7 Top 8, this happened. So his taunt does something now. That's wacky. It's not just an unblockable attack that you can do jet up or whatever. This is the most badass intro I've ever seen in my life. So I didn't see any taunt jet uppers, which makes me a little bit worried, but the fact that he still has stuff off of taunt is awesome. And then of course. release this track soon um but yeah so unfortunately bandai namco europe forgot to change an am to a pm so in the middle of the night this trailer was out on youtube for a short period of time which everybody saw so uh when harada and michael murray came up they asked people to pretend so that they could look good to their bosses so they asked the people to pretend that they hit this is the first time they're seeing it and then and the person who was the hypest was going to get a shirt a Brian uh Fury like Tekken 3 shirt 
signed by Michael Murray and Harada. And for whatever reason, this is stuck in the back of my head. I don't know. I don't know if it's like a. I don't know if it's a response to how funny it was or how bizarre the situation was, but after everything happened, Michael Murray goes, oh, the shirt goes to that guy who lost most of, most of his clothes <laughs> while wow, getting hype. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to forget him saying that. I don't know why. That's like a core memory now. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, and then they, they were nice enough to... They were nice enough to have, like, last minute put together a clip of... Heat Rush combos, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Heat Rush is basically like Dry Brush, right? Uh, you can dash out of a move that you land uh, in order to keep a combo going. So they showed off a lot of that uh, in this trailer that they cobbled together because they wanted to show us something new in one way or another. So that was super duper cool of them. Uh, and the trailer was super hype because we got to see a lot of, like all of the characters that they've announced so far, including Brian, uh, including Brian Fury. So it was pretty cool. Pepperoons wins you stuff. It looks like it animates him. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm happy for that guy, man. He, he seemed like he was super stoked about getting that shirt. Um, so yeah, watch the rest of Tekken eight or Tekken seven. Mind blowing. Top eight for Tekken. Unbelievable. Like, people were walking out and, like, they didn't believe what had happened. Right? Like, it's literally like a dream. Because, like, after it all happened, it was like, did we actually just watch this? <laughs> uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. Super fun to watch. Super, it was super cool to get hype with a group of people, right? I haven't done that in a hot minute. Um, so that was super cool. Uh, but that was essentially my combo breaker experience. Um, and then, I, you know, I... Went to the bar and said goodbye to a couple people, said hello to a couple people, and then went to bed. Because I'm an old man, and I cannot stay up past, like, 9 o'clock. Uh, but shout-outs to Combo Breaker, man. Genuinely, like, every time I go to Combo Breaker, man, it's one of those, like, life-affirming... Like, it's a very, like, reaffirming the, this... Uh, reaffirming experience, right? Because it's like, yeah, I like fighting games. Yes, I like the FGC. Yes, I am going to keep doing this... For a while. <laughs> as long as I can. Or as long as I want to, I guess. Uh, whenever that is. Uh, but yeah. And shout outs to Rick. I, you know, got to chat with him, like, very briefly. Um, and I also got to meet Eidolon for the first time. Uh, got to chat with her for, like, a millisecond. Cool people. Absolutely wonderful people. Um, I'm happy I did. Saw Sharpie for, like, a millisecond. Uh, I tried to say hi, but then she just started like trying to get me to talk to like a game dev she was working with um which was cool they're probably going to be guests on the show in the like before july so we're going to get to talk about them it was uh the game five force fighters which i got to see the grand finals for uh that's a really cool game it's a very unique game and it's a game that i think is going to be very important i'll say that I forgot to breathe throughout all of that. Shoutouts to uh, Tommy Two Step and shoutouts to Raf. Uh, I roomed with them this weekend and I was very nervous about it, but they were unbelievably kind. Um, Shoutouts to Marine and Yohozi. Meeting them in real life was super cool after having them on the show. Uh, Vicious was there. Got to talk with Vicious for a hot minute. St. Cola was there. Uh, saw Yipe. Saw Tasty Steve. You know, had a grand old time. Had a grand old time. 